the far reaches of the universe. In a galaxy not yet known to us humans, lived a tiny and complex creature. Lil Bob. One day, Bob decided to leave her planet and venture off into the darkness of space. This is her story. We were outside setting up for a birthday party for my aunt the next day. And we heard the meowing. We just tried to follow the meows, and then it got real quiet, so it got kind of hectic. Went to the meowing, and it was in the shed. It was behind the house. I wasn't comfortable leaving them there. I was afraid a coyote or something would get in. So we went and got them, brought them in the house. I was bound and determined she was going to eat because she was going to make it. of the internet. Her owner calls her a happy accident. Yes, she's toothless, stubby-legged, extra-toed, and, well, she's special. Perhaps, I dare say, the cutest cat in the world. I got Bub because I thought she was amazing. I took her home. I posted pictures of her on the internet. And this cat, like, always looks amazing, like she's the most photogenic cat in the world. So I'll take a picture and I put it on Tumblr and then people start responding to it, you know, it's like, whoa, and then people I don't know are like sending me messages. One is that she looks so different, but is still cute, so it's like challenging what the standard is for like cuteness or, you know, it's okay to be different and still be like appreciated. And then out of nowhere, suddenly, like, all this awesome stuff started happening. How did she get so famous? Is it the mouth? Is it the extra toes? What do you think it is about Little Bob? I mean, I think it's everything. She's, like, probably the most amazing creature on the planet. <laughs> That is so cute. He's like, what is going on? What is this? We have been breeding cats for 10,000 plus years. We've selectively bred cats to make them cuter and more adorable. I say that we've been crafting weapons of, like, cuteness. I don't want to hear anything, I don't want to see anything. I just want the cute stuff in my face. It's like porn for people who don't feel like watching porn. It's developed because, for whatever reason, cats have become a vehicle for communication. For dog owners, they frequently meet each other in places like dog parks or beaches where dogs go. 
That same type of thing doesn't happen with cats. Cat owners need another mechanism like the internet to be able to interact with one another and form those ties that they could otherwise form or establish in a physical space. That's where media content brings the fascination with cats back into the forefront because media of cats are something that can be shared and suddenly that plays a new role because everybody becomes the circulator. We pass stuff along, share stuff on Twitter, share stuff on Facebook. It's just an everyday part of our lives. It's amazing. Like, I don't really care for many of the YouTube stars out there that get billions of hits, but I think it's really neat that they, you know, started with a camera and video editing software and made videos and started getting millions of hits and now make an entire living just doing what they want. I think that's really amazing. I think YouTube's a pioneer of internet business. People upload a video of their cat. Anyone can do it. Anyone can catch their cat doing something crazy, like smacking a dog or riding a Roomba around. People love it and they share it and they pass it around and it goes on Facebook and Reddit and YouTube will automatically detect that that video is kind of trending and it's going viral, you know? So they'll usually automatically reach out to the user and say, hey, you know, would you like us to put some ads on it? We'll totally share the dough with you, 50-50, what do you say? And it's just like, yeah, sure, why not? So you opt in on the commercials and then every month you get a royalty check. It goes against the contract to talk about how much you make, but like 500 views could be about a dollar. It really depends on the advertisers, but I mean, that's a buttload of money, right? I mean, this goes beyond videos of cats on the internet. It's not just an entertainment phenomenon, it's not just a diversion, but there's something else going on in terms of people establishing a kind of community. So much of the popularity of cat content is involved not just the cat, but then our interpretation or our extrapolation on that cat's facial uh, expression or what that cat's doing. There's a number of theories about that. There's one theory that uh, is called neoteny. Many animals that resemble um, younger humans kind of get in under the wire. So these things like larger eyes, a particular round facial structure, are supposed to key in us this reaction of uh, wanting to, to protect or wanting to kind of help and, and shelter a young human. The face of the cat, the actions of the cat become a way that people not only are amused to watch, but also communicate through. And so suddenly they become a canvas to express ourselves with. <laughs> oh, yeah, for real. <laughs> It's so great to see you. <laughs> My name is Chris Torres and I created NyanCat. NyanCat has over 89 million hits on YouTube. Just the original video, like all the other videos, probably about like a billion views. Like it's insane. These are actually limited edition Cool Jazz NyanCat plush. If you go to Toys R Us, Urban Outfitters, Hot Topic, you'll find the original. We also have several t-shirts, which you'll find all over the place here. We just launched the Sphero Nancad Space Party game, which is awesome. You should check these out. It's not really about the money on our end. Last year, I donated $30,000 to uh, the American Red Cross, Doctors Without Borders, and Child's Play, and I plan to double it this year. It's become this huge pop culture phenomenon. I was like, oh man, like I never knew something like this would ever happen. This is my job now, like everything about this. I'm just Niancat guy, you know, that's, that's the best way to say it. This is Niancat City. It's the first meme pop-up store ever that we know of. And if there was one before it, this is way cooler than that, so. My name is Ben Lashes. I manage Niancat and other memes and the people behind them. Ben contacted me one day and was like, yeah, I think this is a big property you got going on. And I was like, all right, I'll trust you for a little bit. Ever since then, he's been amazing. He's been like the go-to guy. He's now become like the first ever meme manager. Does it get any cooler than that? 
us. The meme pop culture internet world, I just watch it like it's the stock market and I manage some of the top internet memes in the world. Scumbag Steve, full effect. Has class at noon, sleeps till 4 p.m. You feel me? I manage Nyan Cat, Chuck Testa, Success Kid, the ridiculously photogenic guy, Scumbag Steve, Keyboard Cat, I started managing memes because Charlie Schmidt, who created Keyboard Cat, is a lifelong friend. He shot the video in 1986. It had existed for years on VHS tapes and beta tapes, and I had already been thinking, like, Keyboard Cat is a rock star and totally needs a manager. So I was like, I want to do it. My friends are not going to understand it, but I really want to do it. To me, Keyboard Cat is like the Elvis of the internet cat phenomenon. Yan Cat came out and was the Beatles, and now there's a British invasion going on. Currently, I manage Grumpy Cat. I'm ready for my close-up. <laughs> okay, Cody. Once you touch her, it's like, a whole new experience, because she's so oh, soft and sweet. She's just like a little ball of amazingness. She is, just the calmest, sweetest little thing. I think she's the newest antidepressant. She's <laughs> like, I'm gonna go ahead and take a cat nap. <laughs> Tabby and Crystal live in a really small town in Arizona. They're all just normal people with normal jobs and, and normal lives, and then all of a sudden, a few pictures that one of them takes and posts on the internet turns into just this snowball that starts going out of control. This is my brother Brian Bundesen, and he made my cat famous. <laughs> I posted the first picture on Reddit. Everybody said that she was Photoshopped, so we uh, uploaded the video and uh, it just went crazy. The videos were just because people thought the cat was fake. Everybody thought it wasn't real. People on the streets of New York were swarming around everywhere that we went because we had to walk from place to place. We had some people that would walk by and then just freeze and be like, oh my gosh, is that, is that Grumpy Cat? No effing way. One girl walking up, she's like, oh my gosh, is it really Grumpy Cat? She started like, hyperventilating and jumping up and down. She was, had like tears in her eyes. It was like John Lennon was right there, like back to life. It was totally insane. You, you wanna give her a kiss? <laughs> Mwah. Grumpy Cat is totally the next big cat. I'm always happy to see my clients do well. So I've talked to the little bub guys. I reached out to him once because I, I would like to get in contact with him. So I wrote him an email saying, hey, give me a call, I'd love to give you advice or whatever. And it sounds like they are, you know, doing their thing. Like, it's interesting to watch, like, internet cats and everything. These are, like, the new pop culture characters that people care about, you know, like, the new Hello Kitty, Bart Simpson, Mickey Mouse. No one cares about those old characters anymore. Like, the cats, that's what the future is, you know? So right now we're on our way to meet oh Bub, who is the cutest cat in the world. I'm really nervous. Hi, Hi. Hello. Juliet. Hi, <laughs> is it okay if we film? Yeah, that's totally fine. Come on in. Thank you. Oh man. Bub has no teeth and her lower jaw is deformed, so it's underdeveloped. It's actually good that she has no teeth because if teeth would have grown in on her lower jaw, they would have like stabbed the roof of her mouth. She has no problem eating. She eats dry food and wet food. She likes both. 
And because she has no teeth and her lower jaw is short, her tongue sticks out all the time. Her jaw's so short that like water just falls out. She drools a lot, yeah. Right, Bubby? Also, her eyes are really big and funny looking. And she's got extra toes on every paw. You can see there's her extra toe there. Sorry, bub. I know. She doesn't like showing people. She's tired. Um, and her limbs are really kind of deformed and short. So does bub have to like go to the vet a lot or is bub kind of just like healthy and... She's actually in pretty good health. We just did blood tests and urine tests and she was totally fine. She doesn't seem to be experiencing pain now. She's a pretty happy cat, but she doesn't really get around very well, so she has a hard time walking, and that's about it. Does she get along with your other cats? If there's gonna be other cats around, the worst she'll do is make a funny hissing sound or a growl like that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not gonna take it. Cats get really weird around Bo. Like, they're terrified of her. Like, what the hell is this thing? <laughs> yeah, she likes. Just like that, and you can do whatever you want with her. She also likes, like, really high up there, so like her arms are over your shoulder. And this is how I carry her around, like this how I'll be carrying her around when we go places. And then there's this, she loves this. But I don't know if it's just me or the way I hold her. Sometimes she freaks out when other people try. When I first heard about Bub, it was from a text message from some of my good friends. They sent me a picture of her. Bub was a little kitten at the time. Found by their friend's boyfriend's mom. She found her in her backyard with her niece. Whatever the reason, they tried to find her a home. She was going to need someone to take care of her. <laughs> we heard meowing and then we opened the barnyard doors and it was in the corner of the barn, and it didn't want to get out. Oh, check this out. Do you recognize it? Do you think that means yes? Oh, yeah. Double yes. She was the little runt, and I noticed that she wasn't eating much. And I got really looking at her and checking, and I could tell I said, her face don't look right. So I took her inside and took good care of her. Most animals like that would have just not even had a second chance. So you saved both? I guess, yes. Eventually, I got her to take the bottled milk. Emma helped feed her and take care of her. is my cousin's granddaughter and she would come out and play with them. We got a bottle and then we let her drink out of it. Lori told me that she was going to be taken away and then I was like, I don't want her to go. Emma's mother had open heart surgery when she was two and she had rods in her back. Her mother was never supposed to have children, and she carried her nine months, right? She carried her full she term. carried her full term. So Emma's a very special child anyway to all of us. A very special child. Yes, she's very special. And where she goes, she catches people's eye. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's she why does. she didn't want Bubs to leave, because it was special just like her. I had uh, four cats of my own, so I couldn't. If I didn't have all the cats, I would have kept them. I'm just so happy she's got a good home and getting really taken care of. That's that's what makes me happy. When I got her, I was so stoked about this cat. Like, it's hard to leave, like, to go to work, you know? As a kitten, I mean, it's the same as she is now, but just imagine her, like, super tiny and always never complaining and like she has like this zen quality to her like she's like a little buddha or something when you come across a cat like bub i just don't there wasn't like anything like oh should i do this or not it was like pretty obvious like yeah this cat needs a home i'm just gonna take her home you want to get up you stuck how's that 
better? I was just stoked to have her. I just gave her a bath with coconut shampoo. And the combination of her pee with the smell of coconut smells like Thai food. <laughs> like coconut milk and Coconut onions. curry? Yeah. We didn't know how long she'd live is the thing. So I was like, well, she needs a home. Like, someone has to take her in. And if she doesn't survive, at least she was well taken care of. And I was called the vet and see what's up. The vet looked at her and was like, she's actually very healthy and she eats really well. At this stage, she is not in pain. And you can tell, I mean, anytime you put food in front of her, she just goes to town. And you know when a cat's like uncomfortable or in pain or unhealthy, they, they stop eating, they stop drinking, and they like hide. Since getting Bub and watching her grow up and go through all these changes, I had no idea what to expect, but Bub's bones had been growing in a weird way. Like, it was gradual, and I noticed, like, she had a harder time getting around. As a kitten, she was very playful and would jump around. And I remember one time going through old videos of Bub and being reminded of how she used to be. And, like, I really panicked. I was like, oh, man, you know, something's wrong. And she was in a really bad mood. And, you know, I called my vet and showed him the videos. And I was like, you know, and that's when we did all the x-rays. We were looking at the x-rays I took earlier this summer. This is a normal cat's pelvis. This is Bub's pelvis. Um, these are the femurs. And in a normal cat, we have nice, straight bones that have a darker marrow cavity and a lighter cortex. Compared to Bub, it's very white and dense throughout the bone. There's no marrow cavity. And of course, there's twisting and deformity of the, the bones. At some point, I think she will likely develop some arthritis in her hips, which could make it achy for her to walk. The curvature of her bones makes the muscles and tendon attachments not typical, so she has difficulty moving her, her frame around because of that. Um, before this occurred, she was climbing on things and walking normally and acting more like a kitten should. We've tried to go to the literature and find other reports of similar cases in cats, and there just really isn't any. It's like she's got all of these conditions on top of each other, just a, a number of genetic disorders that, unfortunately, in cats with this number of problems don't survive. The bottom line, it means that she's going to have continued difficulty in life with mobility issues. I mean, she's already shown that, so there's no reason to really hope that, well, there's reason to hope she'll get better, but I don't think it's reasonable to. Most people do have a sense that there's something not quite right with Bob. You know, I thought it was fascinating that just that Mike was one of those guys that made videos of his cats. That was really what cracked me up at first. Like, you're one of those guys on the internet who makes videos of your cat? I came to Bloomington to get a degree in audio recording, and then I built this studio here about four years ago. Several months after building the studio, uh, my friend Dan suggested that I host shows. So I thought it was a cool idea, and I gave it a shot. So the first show went really well, and ever since then, we've continued to host shows about once or twice a month. Let's get this straight. I'm always fucked with money. I'm always fucked with money. I know I have like a nice fancy studio, but it's a lot of debt and a lot of hard work and a lot of shit hit the fan. I was about five months behind on rent on my studio. All my tires got slashed on my car randomly. My exhaust fell off, my radiator blew up. I was already so far behind on rent that I sold a bunch of really nice equipment for my studio. All this stuff happened at once and it like hit me really hard, like what am I doing? I built this studio, I like bit off more than I can chew. I gotta move out. I didn't know what to do. It was like a pretty, pretty low point in my life. And then that one photo just like blew up. 
Bub got really popular and suddenly like Good Morning America wants us to show up and the past two months since then have been pretty wild. When you first were like putting the t-shirt out there when like David did the t-shirt design and I, I was originally like, oh that's you know, make a couple bucks on Bub from his friends in town who think it's a cute cat. I didn't think like, oh, people are probably gonna see this online and really like this. This is going on right now. So I'm wearing the Bub Tank. There are different styles. Bub tins, Bub postcards, and Bub stickers. Hey, camera guy. I got a shirt for you, bro. Actually, I wore them the first day we had them, before Bub was really famous. And there was this little girl eating breakfast across from us. And she looks over at me, and she's like, Mommy, Mommy, I want that cat. And that's when I knew that Bub was going to be fucking famous. When we compare Bub to a rock star, it's because, like, we're selling... Do you selling, see the numbers? We're so, yeah, first of all, he's selling a lot. A lot of t-shirts and totes and whatnot, but also, uh, it's being shipped out by the same people who are shipping our records and stuff. Well, who else do you handle at your warehouse? Sufjan Stevens is a really big seller. Explosions in the Sky, Dinosaur Jr., and Bub. But then you think about it, like, cats are way more accessible than like indie rock, right? Three Modest Mouse records in the in the warehouse, and uh, Bub moves a lot more t-shirts. So Bub is literally the Bon Iver of your warehouse. Well, Bon Iver is the Bon Iver of our warehouse, <laughs> but Bo Bub is the next exactly. level down. She is the Fugazi of celebrity so? animals. She's like in no, what ways is honestly, she like Honestly, I think Fugazi. she's the Nirvana. She's huge, you know? Yeah, it's not yeah, like yeah. Fugazi never got huge and never like sold tote bags. I don't understand how Mike hasn't found love from this yet. All these girls are like commenting on Gawker about you and how hot you are. I know you don't like to be in the spotlight here, but it is true. Mike's having a blast. He's fucking no, all these girls. I with know. His cat. You are like Straight a up. part of the Bub story. Like people are way into you. I dated someone for a short period of time and she's like, I told my mom about you and I told her that you own a recording studio and have a famous cat and her mom said, yeah, not that guy. I've got four cats that live at the recording studio. I used to live at the studio too, and we lived together, but then I moved into my, uh, my new apartment. I was kind of looking forward to having a place with no cats, and sure enough, a few weeks after moving into my apartment is when I found out about Bub. So I took Bub in to live in my apartment with me, and it works out pretty well because I have brought her to the studio to meet the other cats, and they kind of get freaked out by her. Pretty much any cat, I think, that meets Bub kind of freaks out. Mm. Oh, you guys should see the whistle where all the cats come to me when I whistle. Man, 
it stinks in here. Damn it. Every day I have to clean this thing out because it's essentially 60 pounds of cats crapping in the pool. Coop's the worst. He he has the hugest turds because he's huge. Oh, and they smell terrible. Also, he's so big that he oftentimes misses the litter box. I gotta use the bathroom. So right now we're heading over to the Exotic Feline Rescue Center. It's a pretty amazing place. I think National Geographic did a special on them. I think it's either the biggest or the, maybe now it's the biggest. They have a bunch of rescued lions and tigers and exotic cats. Indiana has very loose laws on breeding exotic felines. So people will just like breed lions and stuff and sell them and they treat them very poorly. So they go out and rescue these animals and they breed lions. Not the rescue center, but right. people do, yeah. In Indiana? Yes. Some people have like a meth lab in one barn and be breeding wild cats in, the, in like a shack next door. <laughs> kind of goes hand in hand, I think. How much better does it get? I can't wait till I get off work at Arby's. I'm gonna go smoke some meth and chill with my lions. Bub, it's a lion. You don't like it? Oh, Bub's growling now. She wants to fight this one. I really feel like she was freaking out the other guy because he was like in stock mode. She's hissing at him. <laughs> what are you gonna do, bub? What do you think of that cat? You're fascinated, aren't you? Do I need to get back there? Yeah. These veterinarians have come here from all over the United States to do this. And they get together and go places where they can work on interesting animals. Anytime we have a cat immobilized, we take blood so we can do blood chemistry. Uh, that way we get a general health check. Mm -hmm. We give them an injectable drug uh, that immobilizes them, and then we bring them up here and put them on, on the anesthesia machine. So this is your home? This is my home. This is our overnight guest room. We've had people get engaged here. We've, we've had people get married here. And sometimes people come here because they want to get away from everything. It's the living room, the kitchen, the bar, my room. You ask about Oslitz. There's an Oslitz out there? There's an Oslitz out there. Here, hold this curtain open and just wait. Private feeding. You do eat chicken, right? <laughs> That's an awesome. Life. Does she ever come into the house? Uh, sometimes. She would eat these cats, though. Does she come onto the bed? No, she walks around and looks to see if I've hidden chicken in here for her anywhere. Hey, Joe. So Bub's got kind of a line of merchandise. Right. It started out just for fun. My friend designs it, and uh, mm -hmm. she kind of, you know, got famous. And once we started selling a lot of it, I decided to donate a portion of it to, you know, local animal-centric charities. And so we finally raised enough money to make you a check. Well, and thank you. Thank you. I've been here like 10 times. This is probably my 10th time here. Well, good. I'm, I'm sure it costs a lot of money to keep this place going, so 
hopefully that helps out a little bit. It, it cost us about $3,000 an animal a year. It's so, a lot of animals. Yeah. Well, thank you. We appreciate this. And thank we you. will put it to good use. I hope so. Hi, Munch. Hi, Munch. Want to come see me? Hi, Tony. Hi. Hi. Mm -hmm. Touch your foot. There's definitely all kinds of crazy cat people out there. Some of these people are so into their cats that they actively try to make them famous. I get tons of messages from people who ask for advice or actually try and get me to help their pet get famous. I mean, I just don't know what to tell them because with Bub, it just kind of happened by accident. What is the song that he was dancing to the other day that you made him dance to that was really funny? Oh, I can't remember. Sometimes they do this kind of wavy Martha Graham thing and like, it depends, you know, they have their own little weird little things that they do. Some people think it's like gross or crazy to kiss your cat, but I think it's like kissing your little baby, right? <laughs> I was kind of like in the closet about being like a crazy cat person. Once I had Henry for like a year, I kind of came out of the closet and was like, you know what, I'm crazy. Cause I was already buying him outfits and I've dressed Henry every year for Halloween. And he was a lion the first year. And then he was a cowboy. And last year he was a pirate. We got Henry right after we moved in together. So he's kind of like our relationship cat. Yeah. <laughs> and I always joke that if something happens to Henry, you have to break up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is a picture of Henry with Nick on his first birthday. People really like this picture and I like it too because it's just so, it's so adorable and it's just such a moment. Like Nick looks like a father. But sometimes when he's making like his weird meows, well, <laughs> Nick discovered that if you like open and close his mouth, it's just really funny. Ready? Oh, man. Ready? We pick it oh. on you. <laughs> we kind of like to bite them a lot, and but I I heard on Martha Stewart that that's normal. So, are you excited for the Internet Cat Video Festival? I don't know what to expect really because they've gotten so much buzz about it. Like they weren't expecting this to get so big. Because from what I understand, they've like curated this in in the same way they would curate it like an art show. People are excited about it. People love their cats, and so. I think it's going to be um, very happy, very upbeat, very positive. Look at my ball shack. Look at my ball shack. There's my new dance ball shack. <laughs> <laughs> Bob and I are here in Minneapolis for the first International Cat Video Film Festival. Uh, not really sure what it's all about, except for the fact that there's going to be a bunch of cat videos screened in a big open field. Not sure what to expect. Uh, I can only imagine that there will be a lot of pretty intense fans of cats and maybe some crazy cat people. Humans might have domesticated dogs but it was cats that domesticated humans. There's a real appreciation of the way that cats are difficult to govern or ungovernable in a certain sense. Cats really display a tremendous difference of personality. There's so much individual variation between different cats that it's almost impossible to make generalizations about the way that they act, about the way that they are. I'm always trying to think about that issue of the crazy cat lady because for one thing, I feel like I'm right on the cusp of that myself. <laughs> Hi, you're soft. This is one of my favorite shirts here. This is probably my single favorite shirt here. 
people are starting to advance the notion that there is a psychological change that's gone on in some individuals, the so-called crazy cat ladies. One of the big causes for concern nowadays is this suicidal ideation, that it makes people, makes people suicidal. I think there's a notion that they are seeking feline social stimulation in lieu of human interaction. I think the, the best thing in a cat video is the fact that you don't understand it, but at the same time you're completely intrigued by it or fascinated by it, and you don't understand why. I think that's a secret of cats, because we don't understand them, but we want to. And at the same time, they're really cute and adorable. So, yeah. If you have all of those elements in a good cat video, like Little Bub, for instance, um, then it makes for a perfect viral YouTube video, I would say. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've been around cats since I was a little kid. Maybe really uncool in middle school, but I just have this fascination with cats. Also, I was really nerdy, so I didn't really have many friends, but I had a lot of cats. So, that worked well for me, I would say. Yeah, I guess after high school, I thought it was cool because I like cats so much, so. Cats are the most mysterious animals on the planet. It was 1998 when I got, my mom got me AOL. Started going to the chat rooms, and things just kind of grew from there. I went into a lot of the really dirty, Lesbian chat rooms, you know, 16, I didn't get laid, so that was kind of a big thing for me. Conversations that would go on in there, and it was, they got really dirty quick. I mean, uh, everyone was, you know, probably a, either a 15 year old or 45 year old guy. I think at the time, I was secretly aware, but I fantasized that it wasn't, or I'd like to think that it wasn't. But now looking back, yeah, it was definitely all guys. There was no women in that chat room for sure. <laughs> Here's my OkCupid okay profile. This is for internet dating. I've had this since I was 19, so it's probably something I should just keep up. Six things I could never do without. Science, passion, blood, love, hate, occult symbolism. I can relate to serial killers on some level. Um, I haven't killed anybody yet, but I guess I am pretty young still. I mean, it's a social phenomenon. It's the same as, I would say, you know, serial killers or any of that kind of phenomenon, where it's been, cats have been going on forever, but yeah. just this, the internet obviously just kind of jump boosted it into the lives of everybody. Are you excited to meet Lil Bub? Oh man, I'm so excited. I saw that yesterday and I didn't believe it at first and then I yeah, saw him posting it. So I'm more than excited. I think that's gonna like, I'm probably gonna come home and die afterward. So, because that's gonna make my life complete. I've been hearing a lot about Pudge. Yeah, yeah, I don't know too much about Pudge. I've seen a couple of videos. It's cool, definitely awesome. But Little Bub's the king. If you compare Pudge to Little Bub, I mean, there's just no comparison. She just doesn't have that ridiculous face. I mean, I don't think... Yeah. Little Bub's the best. The best cat celebrity around. There's nothing that really competes to her. You hear that, Bub? Serial killers. <laughs> That's her fan base. We're fans of serial killers. <laughs> We're on our way to uh, go visit Pudge, the cat. Pudge lives here in Minneapolis, and... Uh, Pudge and her owner reached out to us about meeting up while we we're here. So, uh, we'll see how it goes. Does Bub like meeting other cats? Uh, she's not thrilled, but, you know, she's pretty zen. But other cats get, get pretty worried when Bub's around. Cool if we go in here? It takes time for cats to be friends. <laughs> yeah, she's the only cat I have, and she's used to pretty much just me, maybe a few other people in the house at a time. How long have you had her for? Just about two years. I got her in September of 2010. And when did you start putting videos of Pudge up on the internet? Um, when she was about five months old, and I started putting up more videos around when she was a year old. And that's about when she blew up on the internet. 
Will you talk about um, her most popular videos again? Um, her most popular one is a video of her with a toy on her head and it's covering her view and so she's trying to get it off and she's just barely even moving and then it finally falls off. <laughs> Do you think dogs are smarter than cats, or do you think cats are smarter than dogs? I'm fairly certain do cats are smarter than dogs. But that's a age old, that's a really long debate. You know, dogs, I think, seemingly are smarter in that they can learn commands, but cats can too, it's just that they choose not to, you know? They kind of have like a, seems like they, they know more than we do even, you know? They just don't care. I don't need to prove myself or my intelligence to anyone, you know? They just sit there and know everything. You can train a cat to go to the bathroom in your toilet. Yeah, I thought... <laughs> Coca. Oh, oh, she Bub. Won't, she won't hurt her. Oh, Coca won't do anything to the cat. No, I'm saying Bub won't, Bub won't hurt. No. <laughs> that was amazing, Kung Fu Bub. Oh. Just so you know, you might have two different kinds of pee on your couch in a sec. Oh, you just got a little more, maybe. Hey, it's just me. Today is the day of the Minneapolis Internet Cat Video Film Festival. Uh, what was funny is we opened up the newspaper and there's like all these pictures of Bub and me, which was kind of exciting, also kind of scary. So we don't know what to expect when we get there. <laughs> oh, well, this article is funny cool. noise too. Oh, it's me and <laughs> Bub in there. Thank you. No way. Yeah. Bub, look. Wow, that's a big article. Bub doesn't really care. Bub's not. Bub's she's not a, phased. She's above it. She's, she's above, above it. it. <laughs> We're going to um, Rose of No Man's Land Tattoo Parlor. Yesterday they posted on Bub's wall saying that they want us to stop by if we had some time. And since Bub loves tattoos, we thought it'd be a good idea. And uh, they said they're going to give me a Bub tattoo. Jay, hey, I'm Mike. Nice to meet you, Mike. Marks. Marks, nice, nice to meet you. Have you been inspired yet for a tattoo? I think Josh has been working on one. Yeah. Oh, yeah? He pulled up yeah. some pictures. And... You're fucking kidding me. <laughs> Puns. He's been doing that all day. Have you ever tattooed any other famous animals? Uh. You know, besides Scooby-Doo and stuff like that? Nope. Get him in there. Oh. Nick is sad that he's oh, missing yeah. out he's on this. Gonna... 
be I really like sad he missed out. Oh, thanks. Very nice. Okay, we're gonna walk over here. <laughs> Did you get a tattoo today, yeah. Andrew? Yeah. It's a good place to do it. Yes. Yeah, nice yeah. Nice you. Your tattoo, let me see it. Oh man. It's awesome. kind of scrunched up now. But yeah, it looks great, man. Where'd you get it? Yeah, and, uh, I'm trying to like, hope it keeps changing direction. Rose? I'm Instagramming pictures of Bob because uh, that's what you do with these kind of things. And it took like nine Instagram photos, that was cool. But then I actually got to touch him, and it was great. You're a superstar, do you know? You're a big deal. You're a really big deal, Bob. We have a cat celebrity or a celebrity cat, whatever you want to call it, show up. Um, that was, you know, none of our doing. But open field is what we make together. So tonight, cat videos. <laughs> the festival was incredible. We were surrounded by people for like two hours straight. And then as it kept going, I just noticed it kept getting busier and busier. And then right before the Cat Festival started, it looked like a Metallica concert. There was like 10,000 people there. I saw firsthand how, how much Bub meant to people. It made me feel good. She likes beer. Do you mind if she tries some of your beer? Do <laughs> you like it? <laughs> Too hoppy. Yeah. They are filming a picture of my face right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's exciting. This lineup, have you seen this? This is great. Oh, man. Wait, so do you know yeah. all of these videos? I know so, most of them, but I don't know every single one. Um, Cat Mom hugs baby kitten, has 47 million views. Yeah. This is a good list, yeah, and they have some pretty obscure ones on here. I mean, Sushi Cat is only like 83 views for Sushi Cats, and I've seen Sushi Cats. So they picked some like, they definitely, they did their homework on this. Now on the surface, it may seem a little odd that the Walker Arts Center is hosting a cat video festival. But if any of you have been paying attention to the open field programming we've been doing over the last three summers, this fits right in. And that's, yeah, let's, let's show some cats. Get to the cat! <laughs> I love that it's oh, yeah. like this small screen <laughs> like there's so many ridiculous but I was thinking they should do like a bigger wider screen but then you realize that these are just really shitty YouTube videos so any bigger would just look really bad
congratulations. Thank you very much. How does it feel? I, it's, it's hard for me to think about the Henri videos as like super high art. I mean, they're meant to just be silly and to a certain extent, just to be a parody. And there's a different kind of cat video, but at the same time, if, there, if people weren't so into cat videos, then no one would be interested in Henri. If I had made Henri with a bunny, no one would have cared. So cats are in, inherently sort of ripe for parody and ripe for us pretending they have more personalities than they really do. Were you surprised that Bub didn't have a, a video of her own? Next year, man. Next year, she's going to have... I'm not gonna, surprised. She's going to be the... Why are you surprised? I don't think Bub's videos are meant to be viral. I think Bub's videos are meant to... People are, are really into Bub as yeah. opposed to, like, the whole idea of a cat video. And her videos let people, like, see more into her personality and see how she is rather than be some kind of, like... Not something scripted. Right. And it's, you know, I mean, she's got some good ones out there. But, you know, I was watching the other ones. I was like, man, these are awesome. You know, Bubs, if Bubs is in this, it shouldn't be. Because it's just Bub being Bub, and that's what she does. A week or so after we got back from New York, I came home one night and found her um, laying on the floor of my apartment. The look in her eyes was terrifying. She was scared. She was shaking, and she'd peed, like, all around her. She wouldn't let me near her. She would scream every time I got close to her, and she was hissing at me, which she never does. I panicked. I freaked out. And so my vet recommended a specialist in Indianapolis and the specialist basically told me that she has a, an extremely rare bone disorder called osteopetrosis, and there's no cure. He said, just keep her on pain meds and, you know, make the call. I had to decide whether, you know, the pain was too much for her to be happy. At this point, she was not enjoying a single moment of anything. She means a lot to me beyond all this crazy internet stuff. She's like my, my best pal. She's like my daughter, you know, and she's very therapeutic for me. All I have to do is like hang out with Bub for a half hour, her licking my beard, and I feel like totally rejuvenated. She's not gonna live as long as other cats and any pet you have is eventually going to have to move on. And when Bub moves on, she's going to go back to her planet. You know, she's never going to leave. And uh, in some ways, that made me feel better, realizing that uh, she might have to go. It's like, well, she's not really going to go. She's just going to fix her space pod, and fly back to Bub, 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 and eat lots of fishes. <laughs>
There you are. Come on, let's go. Time to eat. I'm really glad that Bob got better. It was kind of scary there for a bit, but thankfully Bub must have realized that I need her as bad as she needs me. We're a team, and uh, well, I'm glad she's here. I'm glad she'll always be here.